All right, guys, welcome to the fourth episode of the FAQ Crew GM Chat. Um, and today's guest will introduce it, um, sorry, himself <laughs> right now. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nicholas Varner, also known as Banana McGee One on Twitter because Banana McGee was taken. I GM for a group of critters on Sundays. Uh, it's live stream, but no one's watched it yet. Um, pretty new GM. Only been doing it for about uh, last month and a half, two months, but it's good to be here. Wonderful. Um, so let's start with the beginnings. Um, how did you get into role playing and gaming? Oh. Excuse me, one second. Sorry. Sure. Sorry about that. Um, I think with most people of the critical role community, I think it started with that. Um, I'd heard of D&D beforehand, but I never really knew exactly what it was before a friend of mine was like, hey, Matthew Mercer plays D&D. And I was like, that sounds cool. So I watched it, uh, binge watched the whole thing, took me forever, and uh, <laughs> I was like, I want to do this. And then after a couple of games of okay DMs, I figured, you know what, I'll just give this a shot. Uh, and I ended up liking it, so. Great, so you just um, jumped into it. Yeah, about September-ish of, uh, of last year was when I started playing. All right, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I've been at it a little bit longer, so. <laughs> yeah. But I started DMing I mean, uh, the second role-playing session I ever did. So I played one session of Shadowrun uh, 3.01, uh, and the second session I was the DM, and I have been DMing since most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, you you get into that uh, pretty quickly. And um, so when you DM, do you have a do you run modules or did you build your own world? So far, I've built my own world. I've I've considered doing modules and just putting them in the world that I've built, but I haven't really gotten around to that yet. Yeah. Um, I just really like the feeling of just making things and and hoping the players come across them. Yeah. So, so I've done that so far. So what what what's your process um, when world building? How, how did you do it? Uh, it stuff just comes to me, and I write it down, and hopefully I get to it. Um, I really should probably organize it a bit more, but you know, I'll think of an NPC, or I'll think of a a town, or a name, or something, and I'll I'll go from there usually. Yeah. Okay. So so you started with did you start with the overall world idea, or have you, did you start with a specific place when you made it up? Our first session, I started with a specific town. It was a really small, like, here's your first town kind of town. Um, from there, I built out just from where the players decided to go. And then the past couple of sessions, they've been around the same spot. So I've been building it more, but then at the same time, building around it. Yeah. Okay, so more of the inside-out method, uh, yeah. as, as some people call it. Okay, and did the players... Um, with their characters and their character backgrounds, have any? Did they influence the world building process? Yeah, absolutely. Um, a few. I, I got a lot of their backgrounds before I even built the world at all. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to put them all their hometowns and everything on the same continent. But uh, mm -hmm. I definitely asked them beforehand, like, "What do you? Where's Where's your character from? Where do you want to? Where do you want to be from? Where do you want to go?" Uh, so that definitely played a part. Okay, and how, how is your campaign structured? What what type is it? How would you describe it? So far, it's been a, it's been a decent balance of, of encounters and role play so far with a fair bit of paranoia, <laughs> um, mostly on my part. Uh, I feel like this last session is when I'm, I'm finally hitting the stride and the players are all kind of getting comfortable, but yeah. It, it's it's a nice balance of RP and combat and you know talking to NPCs that kind of thing. Yeah, so, so you have the whole the whole bag of possible. Yeah, I try I try to have it, but it uh, <laughs> doesn't always work out that way. Uh, that's true. <laughs> and how much preparation do you put into each ses each session? I try to put as much in as I think we're going to get out of it. Most of the time I go a little bit overboard and there's things that I go way into detail about that they never run into and that's fine. Yeah. Um, I'd, say, I'd say about as much, if not a bit more, time I put into it than we actually spend playing. 
Okay. So so how how are you how comfortable are you with improvisation? Because players tend to do the unexpected. I'm getting more comfortable with it as the games go on, definitely. That's uh that's something you have to, you get just thrust into no matter what because the players just this last session it did not go the way I expected it to at all. There was there was a cart crash and goblins were drop kicked. It was <laughs> Yeah, improv improv is a good it's a good thing to have and definitely if you want to build it if you want to build your improv skills <laughs> try to be a DM because that's a good way to do it. Oh yes, I I'd agree. Um so you you all you let your players I think it sounds like you let your players run free in the world mostly so they can decide what they want to do. Yeah, I've I've tried that. I I'm trying it as best I can. I think just a mixture of because before this game none of us even knew each other it's an online game roll 20 and yeah. we're all critters so we just got it together this game um, I think a, a big part of the first few sessions was us getting to know each other and kinda how we wanted to play it yeah. um, so I had, to, I had to railroad a little bit with players permission to uh, yeah. try to get them back on track to where they want to be but now that they're out in the open I'm gonna let them do what they want yeah that's, that's great I, I, I like to do the same thing uh, but I think I find it a bit hard, harder to um, have a sandboxy feel in Roll20 because some stuff just requires more preparation to set it up. So the maps and so on and encounters need tokens if you use a battle grid and so on. How, how do you feel about that? I think for most of the... the I have done a bit of impromptu map making before <laughs> because uh, they went somewhere that I didn't have a map ready for, so I had to just build one in, in like five minutes. Um, but for the most part so far, it's been, they go to a place and I just kind of describe it. Usually I have like a background picture maybe. Um, I haven't run into, I haven't yet run into any situation where Roll20's hindered me, but I'm definitely expecting to because uh, back to the improv thing, they're going to go somewhere that I have not even begun to, <laughs> to design yet. So yeah. I'm expecting it to happen, but it hasn't happened yet. Okay, that's that's pretty cool. I, I'm also still learning Roll20, and the background picture idea is something I haven't implemented yet, but I think I should, because it just helps set a mood for a certain scene, even if you don't have a have a complete map ready. Right, I had um, my players in a, a cliffside, uh, like market city, like a bizarre city, yeah. and I didn't, I, I looked for pictures of like, you know, markets and, and cities like that, but I ended up just like going to a picture of a cliff over an ocean and playing, you know, background just ambiance of you know waves and and yeah. horse hooves clicking on stuff and you know, market shouting and it worked. I think it worked all right. Um, it sounds good. So you do you use sound effect uh, sound effects regularly or was it something you tried? I've I've been using them pretty much the whole time. Background mm -hmm. music and ambiance sound effects and things like that. I try to use them as best I can. Um, so far, I think I've been doing a pretty decent job at it. I don't know, <laughs> um, but yeah, I've been using them since the since the first session yeah. for you know background noises and music and things. So to to help your players immerse into the game world, or just because it's a nice feature? I think a little bit of both, um, because it, then uh, it's a nice to have you know music for if they're fighting something, you know, because yeah. they. I feel like it's, I feel like it just adds a little bit more of like urgency or something to it. But when it comes to you know walking around in a market city and there's you hear people shouting and bells ringing and um, horse hooves clacking on cobblestone, it it I think it adds to it. At least for me, it does. All right, great. Um, so now now um, to the next uh, question: How do you handle player death, or how do do you think mm -hmm. you would handle them? <laughs> Well, PC death, I should say. <laughs> yeah, player death. death. That would be different. <laughs> yes. um, I don't know. I, it hasn't come up yet. I've been I've been thinking about it because it's very possible. Because um, I'd I'd like you know death in the game to be a very real possibility. Yeah. But uh, I've had a couple of players say they've got backup characters ready. They'd be they'd be fine with playing backup characters. So it's not a huge. I wouldn't think it'd be a huge deal for them at the moment. But uh, yeah, I don't know. It, it, 
probably be just as as straightforward and blunt about it as possible. Like your your character's dead. <laughs> like there's not. Yeah. You can try to revive them, or they're dead. Like that's it. <laughs> okay. Um, of course, I'd say it with a little bit more you know gusto than that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a bit more colorful <laughs> vocabulary, but. So, so would you use the just um, basic um, resurrection rules from the player's handbook, or would you also go maybe the Matthew Mercer way of making it a bit harder? I'd probably use the Mercer method. Um, <laughs> I, I just a lot of my a lot of my DMing stuff I get from Mercer because you know without Mercer's DMing I wouldn't be doing it in the first place. Yeah. And I've I've added in you know my own stuff and like Matt Colville and and a bunch of other people I've watched. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of Mercer inspired things. So as far as <laughs> resurrection goes, it'd probably be the skill checks and and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, I, I did that too, and uh, well, so far, once, uh, it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so, we have a new rogue in the group. <clears throat> okay, so, um, I'd like to ask you uh, for a favorite anecdote, either DMing or as a player or both. For DMing, it's probably been that last session where uh, there was a cart chase and goblins were on wargs chasing the players on a cart, and I wasn't expecting that to happen at all. I expected them to see <clears throat> the goblin camp and go in and, and do that, but they, they, my our paladin said as soon as he saw the wargs come over the hill, he was like, I am grabbing the reins and I am hauling ass, and he just <laughs> booked it. Um, so that happened, and then he jumped off of the cart and drop kicked a warg or drop kicked a goblin off of a warg okay so that was probably the the best uh, dming anecdote that's happened in this game so far as far as playing goes there was one it was the first game i actually ever played with a group of friends and uh, i played this rogue we were all horrible at rolling that night and the druid tried to befriend some rats it didn't work and we <laughs> made fun of him uh, in character, like our DM was like, "Roll through this and see if you cry." And his character started just crying. So we we go on a little bit more. The character stops crying. About an hour later, we run into some uh, some enemies, and I try to sneak up on them. I face plant into the dirt. I've got a mouthful of dirt. Um, I, I rolled like a one on my stealth or something. And he walks up and tries to befriend this like small dragon that they have with them. Fails miserably. I'm I'm face down in the dirt, and I'm like, can I roll Intimidation just to see if I can make him start crying again? And the game's like, yeah, sure, I roll, natural 20. <laughs> so I'm just sitting, I'm in, like, in the ground, like, oh, it didn't work the first time, I don't think it And he just, just starts bawling again. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was that was funny. Yeah, those moments are what make role-playing great, I think. Mm -hmm. So, um, what actually, coming close to the end, um, is there any advice you want to share with other DMs or people who think about DMing at some point? Um, yeah, just ge general advice for starting out. Um, try not to do what I did and build an entire continent. <laughs> um, build out from what the players are doing. I'd say that's probably the best way to get uh, your players and yourself to have a good time as well as ask the players what game they want to play, whether they want it to be more of a combat-centric, you know, strategy combat war game, or, um, you know, like a role-playing social encounter kind of game, or a mix of both. Um, and have fun. Just make sure everyone's having fun, and then it'll go well. Uh, so, that's that, I think. Uh, Alright, so, uh, thank, you, thank you very much, Nicholas. And, um, when do you rec when do you DM your group and where do you stream? Uh, it's at seven. It's more. It's around eight p.m. Eastern time on Sundays at twitch.tv slash galushi, which is one of my players' um, twitches. I'll type that in there. Yeah, it will also appear in the description. So okay, maybe you'll garner some viewers that way. <laughs> mm. That would be great. Maybe. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, well, thank you very much for being on, and yep. uh, good luck and lots of fun with your campaign. Yep, thanks. <laughs> thank you. Yep. Bye-bye.